Hi, I'm Lindsay Sterling, and today I've brought a couple of my favorite violins, and I'm excited to introduce you to all of them. So this is actually the newest member of my violin family, and I name all my violins. So this one is David, and if you can't tell, um, it's David Bowie because it's a bow. <laughs> it goes along with the theme of my newest album, which is Artemis, and Artemis is the goddess of the moon, but she's also the goddess of the hunt, and in all these depictions of her from like Greek mythology, she's always shown with like these awesome antlers, and then she's holding like a big bow, and so I thought, okay, I have a bow and a violin so I wanted to make this like a crossbow and I used it in the Artemis music video. It definitely was a selling point. Every time I would show it to any one of my guy friends they're like, oh that's bad, that's bad. They, you know, they loved the, the crossbow part of it. But um, also it was really fun because it was designed so that I could take it on tour. It, I, it had to be lightweight, it had to be safe so there was no like pointy edges that might hit a dancer or anything like that. Yeah, and they had to, you know, put it in very specific spots so that when I shift it didn't get in the way and I can still reach around it. So it's it's always a challenge because on a lot of my music videos when I use violins purely as like props in a way, you know, I always tell them you don't have to worry about, you know, I'll just work around it for the video's sake. But if it's gonna be live and on tour, it has to fulfill a very different, you know, set of rules. So the song that I actually like designed this violin for, or I guess that the design was inspired by, is the song Artemis. And it was made for the music video originally. So this is Arwen. I love this violin. Wow, she's dirty. We just got off tour and um, yeah, she needs a good cleaning. But this is a fully Swarovski crystal violin and it's so pretty on stage or in, in music videos when the lights hit it. Like it, I just, I love sparkly things. I'm like such a girl in that way. And if it sparkles, it's, it's better. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I almost all my, well actually all my electric violins are Yamaha violins. I personally think they have the most naturalistic sound. If you want to go that direction, I think Yamaha violins are the closest to a wood sound. This is my, this is my girl. This is Excalibur. And this violin is the violin that I bought when I first decided I wanted to be a professional musician and I was gonna go for it. And I actually, I was living in Utah at the time and I heard about this like amazing violin shop here in LA. And so I drove all the way down here to LA just to go to this, this place. And it's Robert Cower's violin shop. And they, I mean, they have all string instruments. But the best way I can describe the feeling I had when I walked in there and when I was trying violins is I felt like I was Harry Potter going into Ollivander's. Again, nerd. <laughs> but like how it worked is I told them my budget that I was looking in that I could afford and they just brought me violin after violin after violin after violin after violin and I played for about six hours. Just tons of violins until I felt like the violin chose me. <laughs> I was its wizard, and that's kind of why I decided to call my violin Excalibur, because it was almost like the sword I drew from the stone, and it was my weapon against the world, and we were gonna like, you know, we were gonna share with the world together. And so, I'm very dramatic, so that's why I called this violin Excalibur. And to this day, you know, I've now gone to many violin shops and I've tried lots of violins, and sometimes I'm like, you know, maybe it's time to upgrade, you know, get a nicer violin. Um, now that I, you know, I can afford, you know, a, a nicer violin, but I have never found a violin that I like better than this one. And so, she is a German-made violin. She was made by a maker, um, Karl Roth, and she's 100 years old. So yeah, violins get sweeter with age. This is uh, something special about, you know, they're like a fine wine, and the wood sweetens and gets, um, in a way it actually gets harder, so it's more um, reliable also. It's not gonna flex as much as you travel and go to different environments and altitudes, like the, the wood just becomes like set. It's like, you know, teenagers are all over the place and then people hopefully become like, we know who we are. <laughs> I understand myself. I don't have to flex with the environment. I'm good with myself. So that's what violins do.
can't recreate that sound of wood and um, you know, and I, I, it just feels different playing it. And so whenever I play something that's a little more exposed or a little softer or slower, this is the violin I always choose. This is Pickles, and this is my little mini violin. And this is a, this is actually a real violin. They make these in mass because these are like the size that like a four-year-old would play. And kids start the violin at a insanely young ages. Um, I started when I was six, so the one I started with was a little bigger than this, but just a little bit, just a little bigger. Um, but I got this violin because I had a, the thought that I wanted to, on tour, do like a mini set. And so my band, like my keyboard player sits in front of this little tiny toy piano and then my drummer has like a toy drum set with like cymbals and everything. And we would play a medley of like songs, like everything from, like we did on the Christmas tour and then we, on the regular tour we did like Harry Potter and just like a, a gamer themes and stuff like that, but we did them on these tiny little instruments. And also it, someone brought up something to me last time we did it that I had never thought of before they're like my kid it was so fun to watch my kids see that because every demographic is there age-wise you know you've got old couples like you know that are they're they're all dressed up nice for the show and then you've got some raver kids on the side you've got little children like it's it's just a really diverse crowd and I, I love seeing the little kids out there that are just you know saying that they play the violin and it just makes me really excited so this is a fun part of the show to kind of relate to them and also, the adults just find it hilarious. It's been a minute. <laughs> oh man, also like, I always forget when I go straight from like the large violin to the little one. Oh, your hands are so close together. So this one is kind of fun because this was the violin that I played in my band in high school with. This is it, um, and it has transformed many times since then. So this was originally just an electric violin, a Yamaha. When I realized it was like old and not really working well anymore and I replaced it, you know, I kept the violin. And then I think for my Master of Tides video, I used it because I needed a violin that could get wet. And so we, we painted it red and used it in my Master of Tides music video. Then it became this awesome thing when I used it for my Roundtable Rival music video. We wanted it to look steampunk. So it was ridiculously hard to dance and play this because there was a lot of choreography in that music video and even like fighting, like choreography that I was playing and like pretending to fight. And um, this thing is so heavy and it was so hard to balance with this like giant trumpet on it. But I mean, so cool. But yeah, this is a good example of when a violin in a music video is purely a prop. Because um, I, I oftentimes like to think of my violins not only as musical instruments, but as like ex as costume pieces, as storytelling, you know, motives. Yeah, and I think that's a perfect um, expression of like the kind of artist I am. That it's not just about the music, it's not just about the costume, it's not just about the the visuals you see. It's about like the whole story. That's why I like to present on stage in my music videos, and even when I'm writing music, it's like what is you know. What does this feel like? What does it look like when I'm writing it? And what's it going to, you know, be for someone else when they experience it? Not just when they listen or see, but when they hopefully experience it. Thanks for hanging out with me today um, and indulging in, in my stories. And um, I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my favorite violins. <laughs>